Beloved of God, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, with Christians around the world, we step into the season of Advent. In the Northern Hemisphere where we live, Advent and the whole church year begins in the shortest, darkest days of the year. It's actually one of the things I appreciate about Advent. The growing darkness lends itself to the contemplative practices that I associate with this season, like candle lighting, daily devotions, the conscious marking of time. These quiet practices invite me deep into the story of Christ's coming. Which is why the gospel text on this first Sunday of Advent always catches me a little off guard. The church year doesn't begin quietly, but with a grand, dramatic vision. The 13th chapter of Mark's gospel, the coming of Christ is depicted as a cosmic event with repercussions for all creation. Sun, moon, stars, four winds, angels, they all get in on the action in today's text. When Christ comes to bring God's redemption finally and fully, everything in heaven and earth will be involved. I would expect this bold proclamation to be accompanied by trumpets and fireworks. And yet here we are, lighting our one little candle. The flame flickers among the shadows of uncertainty and vulnerability and the fear that so many feel right now at this particular moment in history. This gospel text was written for people in the grip of fear and uncertainty people who were mourning their losses. You may be aware that Mark's gospel was written shortly after the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Roman army. That bright, sparkling complex of buildings on the hill had been the center of Jewish life and community, a place where people gathered to live the rhythm and rituals of their faith together. It was a symbol of hope and of God's presence with the people. And it was gone, just like that. The community scattered, hither and yon. Jews and even some Gentiles in Jerusalem, for them, life as they knew it was forever altered by a random, cruel act of history. This event sent shockwaves through the community of Jesus' followers. They were expecting his triumphant return and got the Roman army instead. The Gospels were written for people who needed to hear the promises of God once again. The promise that the future does not belong to the Roman Empire. It doesn't belong to any empire that is built on the backs of many for the benefit of few. The future belongs to God, the God of love and justice, the God of liberation and salvation, the God who humbles the mighty and exalts the lowly. The Gospels were written by people who had experienced this God, who had seen this promised future breaking into the world in the person and ministry of Jesus. In the face of great upset and turmoil, they had good news to share. God is faithful, and God is doing a new thing. Hold fast to Christ. Keep awake to his promises. Do not lose heart. This good news sustained the early Christian community. Like the flame of a candle, these promises were passed from one generation to the next. They were a source of courage and hope for people of faith, as they are for us today. The experience of our ancestors may seem particularly poignant to us this year, as many of the structures and rhythms of our life together have been shaken and altered by a historic event. I know there are many of you who feel scattered this season, cut off from each other, unable to gather in the familiar ways that Christian communities gather during Advent and Christmas. I've heard the word apocalyptic tossed around quite a bit describing 2020, and it may be a fitting word, Apocalypse means unveiling or revealing. This year of pandemic has revealed many difficult truths. 
We have seen how vulnerable we are in the face of a microscopic invader. I can't believe something so tiny can wreak such havoc. We've seen how stubborn injustices result in unequal care and protection. We've seen with new eyes the broken places in our economic system and our government. As people who follow Jesus' example of justice and love, we have our work cut out for us, for sure. The Christian faith does not deny this reality. We don't dress it up in tinsel and bows and pretend that things are easy and beautiful and happy all the time. We tell the truth about suffering and injustice. But like our ancestors, we lean into the promise that suffering takes place within a larger reality. The Christian story is a story of a love so resilient and strong, so tender and true, that it holds us through all of the storms of life. In Advent, we tell the story of a God who reaches through time and space to enter our messy, unpredictable lives to bring us the gift of redemption. Redemption is not necessarily a comfortable thing. According to John the Baptist, that Advent herald who will show up in the Sundays to come, it involves repentance, which is a type of apocalyptic experience. It involves seeing things that we might not want to see about ourselves, telling truths that are hard to admit. In Advent, we hear the call to wake up, to open our eyes, to be alert to God's presence and power in our lives, and to keep awake to God's promises. You see, our faith is rooted in an audacious promise that God is alive and active, and that as God created this world in love, God continues to redeem and sustain this world in love. As Christians, we trust the promise that joined to Christ Jesus in baptism, we are joined to him in all circumstances of life, welcome and unwelcome. Whatever lies ahead for us, for history, for creation itself, he will be present to gather us into God's love and into God's eternal life. Whatever the future brings, it is held by God in Christ. This is the big, bold promise of our faith. And it is the foundation of our hope. Christian hope is not a mood or an attitude. It is not the result of a well-ordered life or a perpetually cheerful temperament. Hope, as Anne Lamott, the author, writes, hope begins in darkness. Christian hope was born in an empty tomb, among disappointed, heartbroken people, shaken to their core. And yet they learned that where everything seems like death, God is working life. They learned that with God, nothing is impossible. It is this same hope that is reborn in us this season. It arrives with other gifts like peace and joy and love. These gifts flow straight from the heart of God to us. We do nothing to earn them. They are gifts of divine grace. We receive these gifts with open hands and strive to share them with a world in need. And together, we wait on the promise that one day, in the fullness of time, redemption will not only dawn, but will rise like the sun, and the whole creation will be gathered into God healed and whole. Thanks be to God. Amen.